Welcome back, dear viewer. The hills of West Virginia are filled with all manner of ghosts and monsters, but today we are going to Wetzel County, West Virginia to talk about the ghosts of Dolan Ridge and Proctor Creek. Before we get started in this video, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. My West Virginia Ghost Story series is probably the most successful series of videos I've ever done on this channel, and it's because of each and every one of you. If you'd like to support what I do here, preserving and telling West Virginia ghost stories and West Virginia folklore, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and share these videos with your friends and family. Also, leaving likes and comments really extremely helps me out, and if you know any topics, either West Virginia ghost stories or folklore, that you would like for me to cover in future videos, let me know down in the comment section. Again, thank you very much, and now let's get back to the ghost story. Despite its proximity to New Martinsville, West Virginia, the county seat and largest town in Wetzel County, the area between Doolin Run and Proctor Creek is one of the more isolated and rural parts of the county. And over the years, many hunters have reported seeing ghostly figures and shadows lurking around these untamed woods. Shadowy figures lurking just beyond the tree line in areas, especially on crisp autumn evenings. To my surprise, these encounters were written about in at least two collections of West Virginia ghost stories. In Golly's The Big Book of West Virginia Ghost Stories, and A Guide to Haunted West Virginia by Walter Govinda and Mike Shoemaker. But narrowing down who these ghostly figures might have been is not an easy task, mostly due to Wetzel County's long history of unsolved mysteries and murders. This history goes back to even some of the first settlers of Wetzel County. Proctor Creek gets its name from a fur trapper whose name was Proctor who lived in a cave along the creek. That was until the late 1700s when, in a skirmish with some of the indigenous inhabitants of the area, he was killed. Likewise, Dolan Run gets its name from an early settler to the area. Edward Dolan is believed to be one of the first white settlers to the area, but shortly after settling in an area about a mile from the mouth of Fish Creek, he was attacked and killed in a skirmish with the native inhabitants of the area. Later on, Doolin's widow would sell a tract of land to one Presley Martin in 1810. And Presley Martin is credited to being the father of the town that bears his name, New Martinsville, West Virginia. And just a real quick aside, the name New Martinsville was chosen because there was already a Martinsville, Virginia. Remember at this time, West Virginia and Virginia was one state, so in order to differentiate themselves, they became known as New Martinsville. And while some might blame the ghostly sightings on the deaths of these two early settlers to the region, the general consensus is that these ghost sightings might be accredited to the Jennings Gang. And to understand the Jennings gang, we have to begin by talking about the patriarch of the Jennings family, John Jennings. Prior to the American Civil War, everyone regarded John Jennings as a pretty stand-up guy. He had moved to Wetzel County from Monongalia County and was generally liked in the community. When the Civil War broke out, he quickly joined the Union forces and the 15th West Virginia Infantry but within six months, he had deserted his post. But John Jennings knew the hills of Wetzel County very well. Even when they sent soldiers looking for deserters, he was able to avoid capture many times over. This would annoy some of his relatives and neighbors because the soldiers would oftentimes also search their homes looking for him, 
which gave him a reputation of an outlaw. This didn't seem to bother John Jennings, though and he continued to roam the woods and the countryside, camping out and baiting capture. During this time, his wife would sneak him food and supplies and information, but then eventually, during a very cold winter night, his wife would succumb to the elements and freeze to death while trying to bring her husband supplies. Eventually, Abraham Lincoln would make a proclamation declaring that any deserted soldiers could re-enlist and avoid punishment. And tired of running and constantly hiding, John Jennings would re-enlist in the military where he was probably treated worse than how he was on the run in the Wetzel County countryside. Upon returning home, John Jennings discovered that three of his sons had already started some of their gang activities. This included robbing traveling merchants, breaking into residents and rural country stores, and fencing stolen goods. And while his sons did the vast majority of the crimes, many suspected John Jennings to be the secret ringleader of the gang. These three sons' names were Frank, Thomas, and Jackson. Frank's criminal career started when he was a teenager and many believed him to be the true leader of the gang. Thomas, like his father, would also join the Union forces, but then would desert later on and he would never return to service, choosing instead to be an outlaw in the hills of Wetzel County. And their operation was going pretty smoothly, until they tried robbing a cattle dealer named Geo Forbes. This botched robbery would land both Frank and Thomas in the then under construction West Virginia State Penitentiary. At this point, the only parts of the penitentiary that had been fully constructed was the old wagon gate, which had a wooden stockade around it. And this was a particularly brutal time during the West Virginia State Penitentiary's extremely violent and brutal history. At this time period, inmates were considered property of the state. They were treated like a horse, a shovel, or a pick. They were to be worked until they broke or died, and then they'd just be discarded by the state. Torture and beatings were also very common during this time period. Despite this, Frank and Thomas had pretty good relationships with several other inmates. This was really the first time that criminals from all around the state were being gathered in one location. Criminals from the northern panhandle could learn what criminals in the eastern panhandle were doing. Criminals from the Kanawha River Valley could talk with criminals from the Southern Ohio River Valley. Because the Jennings boys were super charismatic and knew Martinsville's proximity to Moundsville and the West Virginia State Penitentiary, the Jennings boys were able to recruit criminals from all over the state into their gang. One night during a particularly violent windstorm, Part of the wooden stockade collapsed, and Frank Jennings saw this as his opportunity to escape. The escape was successful, and Frank Jennings was able to return to Wetzel County and retake control of his criminal empire. Thomas Jennings wasn't so lucky, and he would die during an outbreak of sickness at the penitentiary around 1872. The third brother I mentioned, Jackson Jennings, well, he was a real piece of work. This is an excerpt taken from John C. McEldowney's History of Wetzel County, where he is talking about the brothers in the Jennings gang. When talking about Jackson Jennings, he says, There is an other who was one of the most cruel and inhuman men that ever stood upon the soil of Wetzel County. His name is Jackson Jennings, commonly known as Jack Jennings. He was a brother to Thomas and Frank and younger than either. He was the most unscrupulous member of their family. 
Like his brothers, he was ready at any time to commit a robbery. He was less intelligent than the others and equally illiterate without a redeeming trait about him. He was not capable of planning or carrying out any plan as was Frank without a leader and it was necessary that he should act in a secondary capacity. While Frank would never betray a friend, Jack would for the sake of money or for the purpose of escaping punishment. He would betray his best friend and... For female virtue, he had no respect whatsoever. The language that he has used in the presence of his own sisters and mother dare not be repeated here. He did not know what the sacred words of mother or sister meant. Jack Jennings was hostile towards his father, disliked to acknowledge his authority. On several occasions, he threatened to take his father's life and made an assault on him, and it was some time before the breach between the two healed. So depraved was he that his father stood in fear of his personal safety and on two occasions sought the aid and advice of the authorities, taking the necessary steps to have him arrested. To put it quite simply, Jackson was the wild card of the Jennings gang and always had to be kept in check by his two older brothers. And despite Jackson being an absolute wild card, upon Frank escaping the penitentiary, he would go on to establish a new Jennings gang. He had not just a network of criminals, but also blackmailers, spies, fencers, and informants. And though law enforcement would try very hard, it was nearly impossible to convict or even get law enforcement to investigate the gang. Even to this day, Wetzel County is roughly an hour from everywhere. It's an hour from Wheeling, an hour from Parkersburg, an hour from Morgantown and Clarksburg. And that's with modern roads and transportation. Back then, by the time one of the gang's crimes had been reported, it would take law enforcement several hours to dispatch a group to the area, and by then the gang would have fled to one of their safe houses in the hills of Wetzel or Tyler County. So eventually, the citizens of Wetzel County were fed up and decided to take the gang on themselves. Knowing that law enforcement had failed to catch the Jennings boys on several occasions, they set their sights on the father of the family, John Jennings. This was because on several occasions, John Jennings had been sighted taking late night horse rides through rural parts of the county some of the same areas that the gang had targeted. Eventually, an article would be published anonymously in the Labor Vindicator, a Wetzel County newspaper, requesting the citizens of the county to band together to push out the gang or kill all the members, whichever one they found easier. And this article outraged John Jennings so bad, he went to the newspaper's headquarters and demanded the identity of the author who wrote this article. He even went on to threaten the paper and its journalists with violence before finally being talked down and leaving. But this article and this outburst by John Jennings would set a series of events into motion that I don't believe anyone at the time period actually saw coming. On June 12, 1873, John Jennings was awoken in the middle of the night by a gunshot. Before him or his wife could react, his bedroom was invaded by a group of vigilante annies with faces painted red. It's unknown if these men were members of the fraternity known as the Order of Red Men or if they had been inspired to dress up like the participants of the Boston Tea Party. Either way, these vigil annies had disguised themselves as Native Americans before breaking into the house. They ordered John to surrender and follow them, which he refused. They then put a noose around his neck and said that they would just murder him there in his own home. At this point, his wife threw a nearby axe to him for him to defend himself against the group of vigil annies. This caused the mob to open up fire on John Jennings and his wife, hitting her twice and killing him instantly. 
and for the next two days, known hideouts of the gang would be burned. Its members would be rounded up and threatened, and people from across the state would awaken and see newspaper articles that Wetzel County was under the mob rule of Visual Annies. Eventually, the violence would subside, but no one was ever convicted for the murder of John Jennings. In fact, it's still very much under debate whether John Jennings was ever actually affiliated with the gang or not. To this day, many people accredit the ghostly figures between Doolin's Run and Proctor Creek belonging to members of the Jennings gang who, still to this day, their ghosts are roaming the hills, avoiding capture. I hope you enjoyed this bit of West Virginia history and folklore. I hope to talk to you again very, very soon.